throughout history, the people of Africa have used jewelry as decorative adornment, markers of status, currency, and for ceremonial purposes. These jewelries were used by communities before the colonial rule. On the first shelf, we have, we have jewelry that were used by communities in West Africa, specifically the Digon and the Mali. These are nomadic communities. We also have a representation of Akipande, which was referred to as an identification. These are African silver. These are African hand crosses from Ethiopia. These are from the Orthodox Christians. We have some jewelry, which were made by Alan Donovan, who was an art collector. We have some medallions, which Mr. Murumbi brought during his visits as Minister for Foreign Affairs. We have one from Democratic Republic of Congo. We have from Liberia. We have from Madagascar. We have some gold jewelries that were used by the Ashanti Kingdom, which is present Ghana. To the next shelf, we have some silver. On the top shelf, the most notable one is the Harar, which was used by the Ethiopians during wedding ceremonies. We have a copper pot, which was used by the Indians in Kenya. Towards the extreme end, we have a pot which was used to carry rose water by the Swahili people of Lamu. On the middle part, we have a hirizi. This was used to tie religious documents like wedding vows or religious verses. Towards the extreme end, we have Murumbi smoking pipes. We have a silver, we have a silver pot, and we also have Somali currencies. This is African currency. These are the currencies that were used before the colonial era. This is a depiction of what used to be used. We have small spoons, which the Ashanti used to scoop, used to scoop gold. We also have a hat and a bracelet made of coral, corals uh, of cowrie shells. These cowrie shells we are meant, we are believed to be of very high value and we are, we are used as a currency. Towards the end, we have the long swords, which were used for butter trade in exchange of other precious items. These are the royal beads. These are very popular in, in present West Africa, but they date to before. The royal beads came in different versions. We have the middle one, the conspicuous one, which is made from water agates. These are small pebbles or stones collected from rivers. We also have the beads that the commoners used to wear. At the bottom, we have a bronze head used by the Ife people. We have brass jewelries. These were used by the Benin Kingdom. Uh, the Benin was a popular kingdom in West Africa. We have the different kind of bells. The jewelries in the these brass jewelries depict the lifestyle and the way of living of the Benin. We have different, we have different kinds of bells. We have dramas, we have rings, we have a couple. We also have animals. They, in these jewelries, they explain all the things that we are found in their kingdoms. Towards the extreme end, we have aluminium. This was used by a nomadic community in Kenya, the Trukana people. Uh, most aluminium have been adopted to modern day cooking. We have the aluminium cooking pots. This is a clay head from a, a, an artist in Kenya. The bottom row, these were made from bone from the Lega and Bapede people of DRC. Towards the extreme, towards the second, this row, we have ivory. This is our, these are ivory amulets, amulets, necklace. On the bottom row, we have necklaces that were made from ostrich eggs. Sheila collected some amber amulets. We have some amulets that she collected from Egypt and some that were brought from Mali. We have some jewelries that were used by the, by the uh, nomadic communities in Kenya. We have the surutia, which was, which was believed to be a, a fertility symbol. We have some ivory charms, which was given to a newborn baby or a favorite boy. Towards the extreme end, we have an iron bracelet, which was worn by a Maasai man to symbolize that he had 
at least one circumcised son. The final part we have the Kamba beadwork. This is a community in eastern part of Kenya. The Kamba were famous in their art of bead making and twinning sisal. Everyday objects such as spoons, resting stools and garments used for important rituals and ceremonies are on display. This is the African adornment room. This room we have different things. We have the African spoons used by the different African communities. We also have a, a wood carving from an ebony tree that was brought by Murumbi from Tanzania. We also have calabashes from different communities from Cameroon. We have one from the Kamba community in Kenya. We have some calabashes which the nomadic communities used to carry milk and food from the Tukana, Maasai, and the, and the Kamba people. We also have some African dolls here, which were mainly made from wood. These were carved from wood. We have specifically, we have one which represented, which were given to a woman who gave birth to twins. We have Botswana baskets, which came with different designs. Below here, we have a wooden stool from Cameroon. On the first and second row, we have different head, head dresses from different communities in Kenya, the, the Somali, Maasai, and Trukana. We also have stools from different communities in Africa, Ivory Coast, Kamba people, and the Mali. Weapons that might have been used in war as status symbols and in traditional ceremonies are also showcased. We have different kind of spears used by the nomadic communities in Kenya. We also have the two shields, one made from buffalo hide, the other one made from giraffe hide, which was used in combat. So the artifact room contains artifacts, objects that have been collected from across Africa, from spoons to um, headrests and headdresses and weapons and containers from the desert. Um, anything that you can think of in that, in that sphere, we have it in that space. Again, very educative, just to show people how um, our, our people used to live, you know, because, you know, we have westernized sort of with MSA, so. Works of prominent artists from Africa hang in the Nairobi Gallery's corridors. What we try to do at the Nairobi Gallery is to host um, artists, um, upcoming artists, um, pioneer artists. So when we do a mix of that, it, being, it brings a very uh, nice um, ambience to it because we have people that we already know, Jack Katari Kawe um, and the likes of, 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 of himself um, to the most recent artists. So that, that uh, merger and mix of artists in that one little space brings out a very um, nice eclectic um, uh, view to it. Some works depict traditional African folk tales. We have the kentes, we have the bakuba clothes, um, we have the mud clothes. Um, so this is a space which pretty much talks about royal um, uh, uh, cloth and how it was made because some of it was actually just made by men and also sort of alludes to what Alan Donovan used to do in the sense of um, the fashion industry and how he would influence uh, the fashion industry in terms of design. These are textiles from different communities around Africa. To begin with, this is Kente. These are long, narrow strips which are adjoined together to form one magnificent cloth. It was put outside the palaces of the palaces of the Yoruba kingdoms. We have the Adinkira. This was also another royal cloth. This is part of Murumbi African textile collection. We have the carved doors which were put outside the palaces of the Yoruba people. We have the Dahomey lions which were put outside the palaces of Benin. We have weaves that were used by, the, by different people. These were worn by men. These were worn by women and they were, made from, uh, they were made from simple tools, which is called a hand loom. This was the device used to make the weaves. We have a lamu seat, which was sat by noblemen. We have a fulani wedding cloth. We also have more Swahili seats, which are found in Lamu. Towards the extreme end, we have a safe that was used by the British government during the colonial rule but remains a mystery because it has never been opened. We have a Bamilike. This was worn by Cameroon chiefs and the most notable people in his circle. Towards the extreme end, we have 
a cloth that was used by the people of Madagascar called the Lampamena. It was used in ceremonies which were referred to as Turn of the Dead, where the dead people would be removed from their tombs and then they would be wrapped with new cloth and, and then brought back inside the tomb. The hat and the small shoes are from the Nubian community in South Sudan. While others make statements about the politics and events of recent years. No, this is the contemporary room, which was initially the African pioneer room. This room was specifically built, was specifically designed this after the post-election violence. Behind we have an initiative, One Kenya, which is written in Swahili, Komesha Noma Dumisha Amani. The main aim is to prevent more violence. We have the different colors of the flag explaining the reason for patriotism and why to avoid tribalism in Kenya. Because it is an election year, so we figured let's do a timely um, exhibition that will talk to people in their current situation. So, you know, just to tell people, you know, this is what we went through, this is what our brothers and sisters did go through. We don't want to go back there. Can we maintain peace now? I mean, we've seen what that can do to us. Can we not go there anymore? Today, the building is a national monument and serves as a museum holding temporary art exhibitions. We encourage people to, you know, just walk into the space, see what we do and, um, you know, see how we can work together and have the artworks within the space. So. For, for, for your art to be there, it has to be at a certain standard as well. Um, but we try not to curtail so much so that then we don't lock out artists, upcoming ones, who maybe we could mentor and nurture for them to become, you know, uh, better artists. So our parking is good. And then the experience that they come to get. For children, they're coming to learn. There's a lot of history in this space, so much history, right from the architecture of the building to the exhibitions that we have within the space. And for adults as well, I mean, as in just to see how we used to be, what our culture used to be like, juxtapose ourselves against, say, the West African, because you have a lot of influences from all across Africa. So I'd like to really, really welcome everybody. We are open daily, Monday to Monday, uh, from 8.30 to 5. And we are very affordable on the pocket as well. Uh, we only charge 150 shillings for adults and 100 bob for children, which is really affordable. Um, and you can come in and interact with the space. You know, you can sit down, you have benches where you can just sit down to assimilate what you've taken in or what you've seen. Um, we are there to interact with you and you can ask us questions. So, welcome. <laughs>